Okay, hello and welcome to what is the first part and hopefully a very informative uh, tutorial series on Golden Sun uh, No Saving Quit. Uh, no Saving Quit has been a category that a lot of people have been interested in lately, so I thought it was about time that I sat down with a tutorial series on it. If you don't know me, I'm Plexa here on my YouTube channel because you're seeing this tutorial. And uh, I currently hold the world record for this category and pretty much all the other categories as well. Um, so. Then it was time to impart my knowledge on people so that uh, they can also get into Spearman and Golden Sun. Of course, we're getting a lot of YouTube comments on it, so that's kind of cool as well. So this video is supposed to be all about the basics. So what are the basics in my view? Basically things like uh, movement, battle, menus, uh, menus in general, um, and all kinds of different glitches that exist in the game. We're not going to go over anything particular to the speedrun today. Um, I'll probably make references to it here and there. Um, but in future series, or in future parts of the series, I should say, uh, we'll go through each section and some of the curiosities as to each section and how we should be approaching those in the, in, in the speedrun. Today, we're just going to go over the basics. Some of the stuff will be applicable to other categories, so it could be independently useful, but uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Alright, so we're going to first start off with movement. So movement in Golden Sun is pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, as you can see, Isaac can move in at least the left, right, up, down directions. He can also go up, right, up, left, down, left, down, right. There's nothing too interesting going on there. Some games, um, moving diagonally slows you down. In this case, it's not really true. Yes, your X direction will slow, but let's say we had to move to this location here. Moving diagonally to that location is faster than going up, uh, going left, then up. So diagonal, if you're going in a diagonal direction, is not necessarily going to slow you down. If you're trying to move vertically and moving diagonally, yes, that will slow you down. Basically, Isaac's velocity stays the same, regardless of the direction that Isaac is moving. Um, so that's exactly what you expect in a real world scenario, so that's kind of nice. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to say about movement other than what's basically personal preference. So, uh, in, in my mind, I like to, I should also say there's also no penalty in turning, that's the other thing I should say. Again, as soon as you're holding the direction, aside from like the very first frame, uh, your velocity is going to be at maximum, so penalty, there's no turnal, turning penalty or anything like that, so that's kind of nice. So as I was saying, preferences. Um, some people prefer to just move in the middle of the map like this, so as you can see I'm not touching any walls, this is all fine and this is great, not an issue at all. I, however, like to hug the wall wherever possible. I think that allows you to be uh, as optimal as you can be. So for instance here, in this section, you could hold up and then upright and then right and stuff like that. But what you can do in this game is you can actually slide across walls. Now it doesn't speed you up in any way, shape, or form, so again, per purely personal preference, but it does mean you have to hold less buttons. So here, I'm just going to hold upright and I basically go along this entire wall. Once I get to this part here, on this corner edge, I can hold right, and I just slide along the wall, wall holding right. Don't have to hold any other buttons. So I find that to be really convenient, and I try to slide along the walls wherever possible. You don't have to, it's not going to slow you down or make you think, make things any worse, but it's just uh, something that I like to do. The only other thing that, when it comes to movement, is staircases. So staircases are kind of special in Golden Sun. Um, the rate at which you go down a staircase can vary quite considerably. Um, not really noticeable when you do that, but you can kind of see that I'm s slightly faster than that time and slower on these times. The real way to see this is if we go to Crossman Isle really quick. Uh, so I'm using debug tools here to kind of do this. So Crossman Isle has some really, really, really long staircases, and in, in, in Crossman Isle it's really obvious. So if I enter this room right now, you can see I'm taking a really long time to go down these stairs. However, if I do that, I'm going down much faster. So on every staircase, you can either go fast or slow. Um, fast is basically the same velocity that you would have if you were normally move, moving, and otherwise, you're just really, really slow, and kind of everything in between. Unfortunately, we don't really know how to go fast in staircases. Uh, outside of a few specific instances, like Crossbone Isle here, we have a setup that allows us to go really fast, in general, staircases don't have a, a fast or a slow way to go about them. Um, 
we've tried <laughs> and we've tried to work out ways to do this consistently but we don't really know how to do it uh, it seems to be some kind of some sub pixel mumbo jumbo um, if you do notice that you have slow speed you can try and do some interesting things um, so if I put debug tools back on I can go to fusion temple fusion temple is here There's another big long staircase here. So you can see I'm going slow. Sometimes if you just go to the bottom or the top, sometimes it can like speed you up, like diagonally move on them. Uh, in my experience though, usually when you're trying to fix your velocity on stairs, you're probably gonna end up going slower. So I'm trying to get out of the habit of doing that, but I have a habit of doing that personally. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to do with movement. Uh, it, it's not such an exciting topic, um, but it's good to know that Moving diagonally isn't a bad thing, and of course stairs are a thing. So we can move on to the next topic, which uh, I'll start indicating using this, this notepad document because it's probably a good thing to do. So we'll move on to the encounter rate. So encounter rate is kind of interesting in this game. Um, the game doesn't know what encounter to give you until you take a step, so that's kind of fun. Uh, and of course not really relevant to no save and quit. Basically, um, there are two encounter rates on the world maps. Basically, if you're just running around, this is fine, not a big deal. Uh, and you can kind of see that my encounter rate was like, went up pretty quickly. I managed to do an entire loop around Billabin before that, kind of got to 13. However, if I run through the forest, you can see that my encounter rate is going up much faster, and in fact, I got an encounter quite quickly. That's the first point you need to know about encounter rate. Walking through a forest is going to increase your encounter rate a lot faster than just walking on land. Um, so generally speaking, we try to avoid forests wherever possible. Sometimes it will be more efficient to run through a forest in the particular series uh, when we're focusing on parts of the speedrun we'll talk about when those instances are, but as a rule of thumb you can basically avoid forests wherever you go. The other thing to say is that Isaac, you can walk with Isaac, and yes your encounter rate does go up slower. I've taken a very, very inefficient loop around Billabin, and I got to 14 encounter, which is like a little bit worse than 13. Um, so yeah, walking does increase a little bit slower, but we're never going to walk to do that because you're never going to skip the encounter, and if you do skip the encounter, you've probably wasted just as much time um, walking as you would have just by running and taking the encounter. So we always run. Encounters can be reset. So as you can see here, I've got an encounter rate of 14. Uh, you don't need to know what that means other than it means I am getting an encounter. If I enter and exit an area, my encounter resets to zero. So sometimes what we'll do, sometimes what we'll do is we're coming along here, we're running along here and, oh, I haven't got an encounter yet. I can take the reset in Villabin and then I have basically reset my encounter rate back down to zero. So that will generally work on any town or any area or basically any time you do an area transition. So from Goma Cave to the world map is fine. But if you're within an area, there's no encounters in Goma Cave. So see I'm in Goma Cave here. If I transition to another area in Goma Cave, the encounter rate stays the same. So anytime you change area, your encounter rate resets. Very useful on the world map. Not so useful in dunge dungeons, at least not in this game. It's kind of more useful in TLA, but we're not gonna we're not talking about that today. There are certain rooms in this game that have no encounter rate, and that's we've kind of illustrated this point here with Gumba Cave. This room here, for instance, has no encounter rate, which is kind of nice. You're never gonna get an encounter in this room. Uh, we'll go through the rooms in particular when we get to each individual section of the speedrun. But rule of thumb is that if the room has a puzzle like a, a pretty serious puzzle that is, not just like a move a block out of the way kind of thing, but an actual puzzle, there's no encounter rate in that room. Uh, there's a very particular instance in Clean Forest. Uh, let's see if I can find that. Where's Kalima Forest? So in this room in particular, there's a giant puzzle here. This, this moving, jumping across the logs puzzle here, it's, uh, it's kind of difficult. Oh, well, not really. But anyway, point being, there's no encounter rate in this room because it's a big puzzle. However, if I go over here, yes, there's encounter rate. That's that's kind of nice. But if I drop into here, there's no encounter rate either. This is a puzzle area. It's this big rolling log puzzle, and there's no encounter rate. So rule of thumb, if there's a puzzle, no encounters. 
If you're running on sand, a uh, sand fall that is, in Penis Lighthouse, there's no encounters. And some selected rooms in between that will not generate encounters either. The other thing to take away is that if you transition area, your encounter rate will reset. Of course, if you take a gen fight or any kind of encounter as well, a gen fight, boss battle, anything like that, you'll also reset your encounter rate, but that's somewhat implied. That's pretty much all you need to know about encounter rate. At least for this big run, it's way more important than any percent, but that's its own thing. Alright, manually. Menuing is one of the real secrets of going fast in the speedrun. Um, having quick lightning fast menus is so important in this category. Um, you want to get your average encounter time down to as small as possible, and you're going to do that through fast menuing and fast decision making. So menuing is your mechanics, the decision making is just something you have to learn. So how do you go fast in menus? Well, the first thing you need to know is that in battle, the menu is actually pretty responsive, that's pretty good. You can see how fast I'm going left and right here. Pretty quick, that's, not, that's, that's pretty good. What we do to go really, really fast, because you can just press left and right, that's not a problem. The way we go really fast is a technique called menu gliding. And I don't know why we call it that, but I just use that word. There are two ways to do it. Neither is superior to the other, although we, everybody certainly has their own preferences. If you come from a different background, you may prefer one methodology to the other. Um, I will say that if you're using Virtual Console, one method is way more accessible than it normally is because you can do remapping of buttons. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So the first way you can do menu gliding is by knowing that up and down also move the menu along. So if I do a quick combination of right and down, I'm going to go two spaces instead of one, as you can see. And I can go much faster than I normally would be able to. So for instance, if I want to select Jin, instead of going right right, I can go right down and go straight to Jin. And as you can see there, right right goes that fast, right down goes that fast. It's basically instantaneous. Again, if I want to go to summons, I can do right down right or down right down, depending on your preference, and go straight to summon. Um, a runner by the name of Run Run uses this technique, and I believe Bowie is doing this technique as well. Um, it's lightning fast, it's, it's really good. The only downside is that if you're in a summon menu, you, don't necess you can't necessarily do that, because if you do a right down, right to down, or down right, you go over one. I almost hinted at something there a little bit, and that is that if you actually do down and then hold, if you're holding down, hold down, then go down right, you'll actually do the instantly thing going over. Uh, so as long as you're holding, if you instead of doing down and right, if you do hold down, press right, you'll actually skip over and jump jump the thing. So menu gliding just has to make that small, uh, so the down right method just has to make that slight adaption to ca tackle these menus, um, but it's not too much of a difficulty. Of course, if you need to go to the other direction, up and left work, so up left, or down right, no problem. So that's method one. I don't use that method because I, did, I never played like a fighting game, so I'm not really used to the Hadouken inputs because it's very similar to Hadoukens and stuff like that. Hadoukens and Shurikens and whatnot. I use the select or start method, and I think it's better generally, but it really is personal preference, so just because I do it doesn't mean that you have to do it. Basically, there are a whole bunch of buttons that do nothing. So if I'm pressing the start button here, yeah, it's doing nothing. If I'm pressing the select button, it's doing nothing. L does something, R does something, but these two buttons don't do anything. What happens is if I'm holding right, holding right, as you can see, I've got the right thing up there, and then pressed select it, while I'm still holding right or start for that matter, it's going to jump me over and re-input right twice and jump me over. Basically, if you're holding a button and you press one of these null input buttons, it doubles the press. So if I go right select, I go over them instantaneously. Same thing for left, right? Right select, left select, right select, left select. As long as I'm holding down the direction while pressing select, it's going to work. Same thing works for start. Right, and you can do right start select to get to summon and it, it, it all kind of works. 
that's my preferred method. I love using that because in the summon menu, for instance, the same behavior happens. So L and R also don't work here, so you could use uh, L and R here, but wouldn't because it's not habitual. You can use select here to go up and down, no problem. Same thing with start. So I really like to use that method in, in battles. Uh, it works on all the menus here, so I can do it here as well, and so on and so forth. So th that's what I do. So I have my controller specifically mapped out so I can make use of, of the select button to uh, do all these menus really quickly. So that's what that's menuing in battle. Other than that, it's basically just knowing how to do things really quickly. So if I need to go to items, I can go left, go to herb, use a herb on somebody, whatever. Use Mercury, it doesn't really matter. That's basically it. Knowing the menus and then being able to know the fundamentals of menu gliding allows you to go really, really quickly. So that's battles in a nutshell. So let's now go to out of battle. So the thing about menu gliding is that it does actually apply to certain menus outside of the game as well. Outside of battles as well. That's why we did battles first. So for instance, if I'm in this screen. Menu gliding kind of works here as well. So you have to hold the input for down right or down select, whatever. The way I do this menu quickly is also using the start select method. So here, uh, but I have to use it a different way. So if I press select here, I'm actually going to change the color of the background. If I press start, I'm actually going to get out of the thing. Ooh, start confirms. I didn't know that. I just learned something. That's nice. I don't like this blue. Let's go back. <laughs> Alright, so the way I do this is that actually L and R have no input here. So what you can do is you can hold down, press R, and quickly go to message speed. Because right at the start of the game, you're going to want to make this go fast. And then either A or start to confirm it. Same deal here, if you hold down and press right, it'll work. Or left for that matter. So, again, personal preference, whatever you want to do there. So that's the quick way to do that. Same deal here, this works exactly the same as in battle, no problem. There are a few things where menu gliding isn't so great, and that this here is one of those menus. <laughs> so no matter what you do, it's it it doesn't accept the inputs correctly. So even if you're holding down and press right, it does that. Down select, it down select does work, but there's so much more lag. Like, I can actually show you, we saw before how it was basically instantaneous before, advance one frame, it works. If I go hold down, press select, it does, it only goes across one. So this menu is so laggy, I actually just use up and down, left and right to go, to go where I need to go. Um, there's, otherwise it's just too much lag and it's just really, really annoying. Um, so unfortunately in this menu, you, you can't really go really fast, you just have to do the thing you have to do, whatever. The other thing about out of battle menu is if you have to say interact with Trit here, see I get this text box, then it opens the menu and then I get to use the Hermes water. If you are instead in the right location, so for instance right here, I can just open the menu and use the Hermes water straight on Trit. So anytime you're interacting acting with something and you need to do something and it's going to open the menu, it's just a little bit faster to open the menu using select rather than A because you can open the menu with select, as well select, and A will open the menu, but if you're talking to something, A will interact with the object. In which case you select, and use the Hermes water. It's a little thing that just saves a little bit of time, a little bit of, little bit of a frame saver, kind of useful. But one other thing that you need to know is that if you're using an area uh, as synergy out of battle, so uh, thinking mostly avoid in this instance, using avoid in a dungeon like this, is going to be about half a second faster in this game than using it in the overworld. I don't really know why that's the case, but it is slightly faster. It doesn't really save that much time, but it's a, it's something that you should know. Right, so that's everything I need to say about menuing. Um, probably not a lot of useful information, but some of it's a little bit obvious, but definitely try and practice menu gliding to get as, as fast as you possibly can with that, because that, that, it'll just basically pay an enormous dividends. Alright, next thing, we're going to move on to the Retreat Glitch. The Retreat Glitch is like the main glitch in Golden Sun. Um, there's a whole aspect of the Retreat Glitch we're not going to talk about today that's exclusive to saving quick categories. 
um, but we will just focus on the ones that you can do without save equip in this game. The way you do it is really simple. You need to get Isaac's PP below 5, and I'm going to use my utility script to basically drop Isaac's PP below 5 for demonstration purposes. Next step, you need to hotkey retreat to L or R. You can either do that using select and then making that sort of shortcut, or at this screen press R and just select that. Uh, neither is uh, for the R or L select se selection on this screen, so pressing L or R on this point is slightly faster than the hotkey. I am a loser and I have to habitually do select R because I am bad. Anyway, point being, put, put retreat to either L or R, doesn't matter, I like R, everybody else likes L. Because my PP is at 5, if I use select, uh, if I use retreat, sorry, on this hotkey and try to use it, it will fail. Great. Now, I'm in what, now I am in what's called retreat mode and if I walk through a door, Sometimes it sends you to the wrong place. This is most certainly not the right place We can verify that because if I walk through this normally, this is where you're supposed to end up So what is going on here? Well What happens is that When retreat fails the game actually thinks retreat was successful and believes that Isaac is in the first room of the dungeon that from that point onwards Every, every interaction you do with an object that is relatively looked up, in this case doors, will be done as if that door was in the first room. So, if I turn on the script really quick, this is kind of like a grid overlay type thing, so you can see that this is door 6. Now if I am in retreat mode and I interact with door 6, that corresponds with the door here. Now if only I could get in this door, but... Oh, never mind. Anyway, this door here actually corresponds with door 6 in the first room. Let me... I can actually pull this up. This is the first room, door 6. That's not where I want to go. That's still not where I want to go. Oh, I'm in the wrong Alton. Haha, <laughs> funny. Alright, I can't find it. Never mind. Doesn't really matter. Anyway, point being, it looks it up relative to the first room, and it tells you where, where to go. Which is kind of, uh, and then it points you in the right direction. Okay. So the point here is that there are specific instances in the game where doing this glitch will basically save you a ton of time. Um, Mercury Lighthouse being an obvious example, Alton being an obvious example. As long as you know how to do the technique, which is drop your PP and do it, it will work. Um, you can have fun experimenting with this elsewhere. If you happen to be sent near Vale, congratulations, you hit a door which doesn't exist, and the game has sent you to a safety location. Um, but that's basically all there is to the retreat glitch in kind of a practical sense. There's only one other instance where the retreat glitch does something interesting. That's in Lama Khan Desert. So recall that when you go into retreat mode that the game decides to look up everything relative to the first room of the dungeon. In this place, if we do reveal, if we do reveal, <laughs> and then go into retreat mode, reveal is kind of a funny ability where it's actually using assets from the first, from the room you're in to kind of load things. Uh, so when you come out of reveal, it tries to reload all the information back into the room. Normally that would be fine, but in this case, it tries to load in a bunch of information from the first room, and it ends up distorting this wall here. <laughs> And it has some very interesting effects, so um, if we use reveal here for instance, we'll get taken to this antlion fight and we'll end up out of bounds and coincidentally we're right next to the manticore, which is one of the ways you can do that skip. The other way you can do that skip is to basically get an encounter here, which we we'll try and do as fast as possible. And it'll actually allow you to clip out out of bounds over here, and again you can just walk up to the manticore. And yeah, so that, that that basically is how you can use the retreat glitch. It's kind of a fun thing. I think pretty sure we've mapped out every possible instance of that this can be used, so you're more than welcome to experiment, but we're pretty confident we've got everything, so you don't need to understand the science of it necessarily as long as you know how to use it. Fantastic. 
the finer points of the retreat glitch are way more applicable to the other categories, so with that in mind, we will move on to the next glitch, which is Reveal Walking. So this is a fun little glitch. So this is Venus Lighthouse 1. This is the only place in the game where this works. See how I'm ticking up with encounters here? That's kind of annoying. Encounters are bad. Turns out that in this room, uh, as I mentioned, Reveal loads, in, loads things kind of funnily. So in the English version specifically, when you use Reveal, it's actually loading a Reveal map version of Venus 1, and apparently in the English version, there are no encounters. <laughs> There's no encounter map associated to that. So as long as you're in Reveal, you will never get an encounter. We call this Reveal Walking because you basically spam Reveal and walk through Venus 1. Unfortunately, this does really only work in Venus Lighthouse 1. There's no other place in the game where it works, Venus Lighthouse 1 being the segment through to when you activate the statue. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Very, very simple glitch to do. You just have to buy and reveal to a hotkey and use it a whole bunch of times. So the retreat glitch and reveal walking are the two glitches you're going to make use of the most. Um, they're definitely the most applicable to the most useful in a number of scenarios. We're going to go into a bunch of glitches that are like really fringe use cases. They're not going to save much time, like seconds at most, but I'd be amiss if I don't speak about them. First one's the, the Xi'an Frost Clip. So this is a glitch that actually is way more useful in TLA, but we first discovered it in Golden Sun 1, believe it or not. What you're going to do is you're going to get Isaac, and notice how Isaac's got a bit of hair when you look up. You're going to align the tip of the hair with like the bottom of this keyhole. I'm a little bit too high. Let me try again. It's been too long talking about Isaac's hair. We want the tip of Isaac's hair to align with the keyhole. Like, right there, that's pretty good. Notice how this young girl here is just blocked by Isaac. This position is really useful because what you can do now is you can go away, do all your manuing, whatever you need to do. And then she's not gonna not gonna move anywhere. What you're gonna do after you've done your menu, and once you're in this position, is just go up one pixel. Up one pixel. And then talk to this young girl while you're facing away, it will work for some reason. Isaac will move. Cast Frost. Hold up. Tap left and bang. You clip onto the top of the pillow. So yeah, the trick really is, as long as the hair is aligned with the keyhole properly, you are going to be one pixel below where you need to be to have the glitch work. If you move one pixel above, and then talk to the Xi'an girl, again, it will work from any direction, and just cast Frost, it will work. Now you may not get the exact position I had, let me try and get the, a, a different position just for the sake of it. Um, if I go a little bit too far to the right, I'm gonna get this right vertical, here we go. A little bit too far to the left, sorry. Walk up, talk to her. Damn, I still got the same one. Oh well, doesn't really matter. It works. Uh, regardless of what happens after the Xi'an girl moves you out of the way and you physically move, regardless of where you're put, if you cast Frost from that position, it will connect. It doesn't matter if you're facing it or not, it will connect. I'll give it one more try just to try and illustrate the point. Try be a little bit too far up. There we go, okay. Now this time, I, I didn't move, so in fact this is optimal. But Frost will connect, it doesn't matter where you get put, it will connect. There we go. And it, it works from, a, it's not very accurate, you can do it from a number of locations. So this is Xi'an Frost Girl Clip. It saves about 5 seconds if you do it optimally, at least 2 seconds if, the, if you have to wait for the girl to get to you. So it's really not a bad thing at all. Move Clip. Move Clip was sort of something that was discovered relatively recently, and I don't have a good setup for it just yet, um, but if you look at the position of Isaac's shadow right now, that's generally the positioning that I'm, I'm the, the, generally the visual cue I'm using to try and align these things. These Move Clips are far more useful in the Lost Age, but 
they can be done in Golden Sun 1, although this is the only location where it actually saves time. Very similar to the Frost Clip, as long as Isaac is in roughly this position, I think it's pixel perfect, at least vertically, horizontally, I think you have a bit more tolerance. Use move, hold up, and you just pop up onto the statue. Really simple. Let's see. Yeah, so there's a bit of horizontal lenience, but I am fairly certain. Yeah, it, it can be very, very finicky. As you can see, I'm very close to where I was before and move's not going to connect. So basically, get the position, work out how you're going to get to this position, cast move, hold up, you'll clip. Very simple. Um, it barely saves any time at all because in this location there's no encounters and you're basically just going to run around and jump onto the thing anyway, so yeah, it is what it is. The last one that is um, barely going to save you any time is what is known as the Instant Climber Instant Fall Glitch. Uh, let's take... Oh, let's do Tread. Tread's great. So, in the safe and quick categories, we have a glitch called the ins uh, the Infinite Climb glitch, which allows you to climb a ladder instantly. This is very... Uh, infinitely. This is very, very similar, although you don't need a safe and quick to do it. Okay, for this, I'm actually going to need the frame counter. What you're going to do is... Here, I'm going to instantly climb this ladder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down for 13 frames. And on the 14th frame, I'm going to hold up. This is going to confuse the game and think, I'm getting off the ladder, but I'm holding up, so I'm going to climb to the top of the ladder. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14th frame, change direction. And, lo and behold, I climb up to the top of the ladder. Now, almost every ladder in the game, it is going to be optimal to do this skip. Uh, to do this this glitch however at 60 fps hitting a one frame trick is very very difficult in a practical setting so yes the task is going to do this all over the place but in a real speed run um you're never going to be doing this unless you want style points um there are a few places where it's kind of a, a good candidate to do this is this ladder here is one of them so Coming off this ladder, what you can do is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14th frame, hold down, and fall straight to the bottom of the ladder. That, for instance, would save 2 seconds if you got it first try. And again, you can do this on any ladder in the game, it's not too difficult. Well, it is difficult from a uh, execution perspective, but it's not too difficult uh, from a conceptual perspective, so. Uh, if, you, if you can get it down, you can get it down. If you can't, well, that's fine. It's not good. You're not going to lose too much time by doing that at all. Should have incremented this along to that. That's fine. Anyway, I think at this point we've covered the basics. It's not too much more that I should say. Um, I think we've pretty much got everything. Hopefully you found this video useful. Uh, we're going to do a big series on this. Like I said, we're going to go through every different part of the game. We're going to make sure that all the little tricks are articulated and that everybody who wants to learn this category can do so. So thanks for watching and I hope you uh, tune in for the next part.